So today I am crafting with a very pretty stamp set from the uh, Celebration Catalog. Let's see if I can get that glare. Okay. It is called Beautifully Happy. It is a two-step photopolymer stamp set. You can uh, stamp the outline of the pretty flowers, and I don't know the kinds of flowers, but I bet that somebody who's watching does. So if you know what, what the name of these flowers is, type it in so I, I'll be informed. You stamp the outline, you can fill in the color for the flowers, the little buds, the leaves. It is super pretty. What makes it a very nice stamp set, the thing I always look for is there's the art and there's the greeting. So lots of greetings and to the fonts where they mix up the, the cursive and the sans serif font for a feeling better kind of day, sending happy thoughts, for a very happy birthday, kindness matters, thank you, you are easy to love. So right off the bat, we have sentiments for all kinds of reasons we would want to send cards. It is a photopolymer stamp set, which makes coordinating the coloring super easy. No blends needed, no watercolor pencils, no watercolor brushes. It is gonna be super easy to color the images with the second step. Now, to prepare for my class, I did cut some dies using, or I did cut some shapes using my stylish shape dies, mostly the circle. And then for one card, I also borrowed the beautiful oval frame from Framed Florets. Let's see, in this stamps set and bundle, there is this great oval that cuts hearts as well. So you get the big oval frame framed out with hearts and I've used that as well. And I did pre-die cut so you don't have to watch me bring out the machines. I'm gonna start off sharing with you also that I am using the papers from Dandy Designs, which is also a celebration item. Both the Beautifully Happy and the Dandy Designs are level two gifts. That means they're your gift with $100 US. So the patterns and the colors and dandy designs are just perfect for springtime. And of course, you can see this is a huge stack of paper, 48 sheets. We're gonna get four sheets of each of the patterns. And you can see we've got Mango Melody. We have Petal Pink some dots, some kind of funky shapes, retro style shapes, grid in fresh fr fresh freesia, calypso coral stars, some stripes again in mango melody, bashful blue, pool party, granny apple, and some more prints. And that is just side one. Of course, two-sided paper, we have more pretty designs in those beautiful soft colors, some plaids, some flowers. This is an awesome pack of paper. Um, those of you who like to make multiples of cards, you will have multiple sheets, so you are not gonna be running out of your favorite pattern. All right, so let's get started. My cards are quick and pretty, and I'm gonna start with this first one that has that pretty little flower. Let's see if anyone, I'm gonna check my comments, see if anybody's told me the name of the flower. Oh no, Marie says she was going to order that punch on Saturday. Marie, I feel for you because on Saturday, I did notice it was on low inventory. Now, we're talking again about that clover punch. I knew it was gonna be a popular item when back and the first week of the catalog, it was already sold out, but they did get a second shipment in. Um, it is now, as far as I know, completely sold out and it will not be replenished. And Barb is saying she got two packs of this paper. Yay for you, Barb, because I have had been having a blast using it for all kinds of projects. Let's see, no, I don't see where anyone's told me the name of the flowers yet. Um, maybe by the end or a little bit later. So this card is for a feel better kind of day. I'm gonna be using the, the main flower, the largest flower, 
or and you can see I have a stylish shape circle with that pretty stitching there and I like this funky pattern with the grids with the squares the soft squares and petal pink and fresh freesia really super easy cards to do as well so let's share that card I'm going to bring in these are on basic white cardstock standard card size so holly hollyhocks thank you kathy you know i it was almost on the tip of my tongue i knew i'd heard it before but i my memory just was fading on it so i think you're right um as i said i think i've heard that before as well so i'm going to take my basic white it's uh let's see i'm, <laughs> I'm having to think now five and a half by eight and a half I scored at four and a quarter of course we're going to burnish that set up our card base and most of these layers are going to be flat adhered with maybe some dimensionals for the focal point art now I cut my pattern paper and look at that like always we have two sides and it's going to be a bear trying to decide which one to use the good news is you get four sheets of each pattern so you will have plenty of each pattern this is four inches by five and a quarter, and we're just gonna flat adhere that. I'm gonna bring in one of my old favorites. Hopefully I have some left here. This is Fast Fuse. I love this stuff. This is the predecessor to the seal, stamp and seal. And just like the stamp and seal, this took a little bit of a learning curve, and I found a gold mine in my craft room not too long ago with some extra um, refills of fast fuse so I'm going to use it up again it's my favorite normally I would be using Tombow liquid glue okay so that's just centered in we have about an eighth of an inch border all the way around we're going to do our stamping and I've got fresh freesia here and my basic white this is a photopolymer stamp set so I'm going to want to ink up on on my pierce mat and this also is a is a large stamp so let me put down some paper on my piercing mat so i don't soil the piercing mat yes i think you're right marie um i think that's what kathy said as well so i think we're going to be in agreement it's they're hollyhocks and i love them they are so pretty in the garden and so pretty on the cards so this large image you will need the larger acrylic block this is an E you can see right through it and I am gonna first do my outline and I'm using memento tuxedo black and I like to flip my block over and ink up this way as opposed to putting my ink pad down and inking up just uh, is easier for me to manage so I'm gonna put look at this I can't even put the entire stamp on the circle it's that big I'm gonna press down firmly and you can see how it's falling off the circle so it's nice huge image there we go and there we go so so pretty there I'm gonna set this one aside I'm gonna be using it and just again in just a few minutes I am going to bring in also a scrap of fresh freesia it looks like it's uh, maybe seven eighths inch wide I'm using the greeting that says for a feel better kind of day and this also is getting inked up in tuxedo memento black look at that I can see right through to stamp nicely that's the upside of the photopolymer stamps. You can see through for perfect placement. All right, let's see. Then I'm gonna bring in my ink to color the, that flower, the hollyhocks. And I'm gonna start off with my leaves. So the stamp, the second step is the whole cluster of leaves and I am using pear pizzazz. So this little card set is mostly subtle. I'm gonna ink up here and tap, tap. Again, the cool thing with this is that you can see right through. 
for placement and it doesn't have to be precise because this is like a watercolored effect it's like a distinctive stamp i'm still trying i still want to be kind of accurate it's a distinctive stamp which means you can see some texture in the image just from the ink so look at that so easy no blending needed no watercolor brushes so simple all right let's bring in fresh freesia and this time i'm going to bring in the flower images <laughs> oh no okay kathy has to run you can always click by and watch the replay here or i upload to youtube it does take a little bit of time on the youtube but it's worth checking back because the cool thing about YouTube, of course, is you can fast forward, <laughs> which I love. I'm, I'm not going to lie. A lot of times I put it on, not fast forward, I can speed up like at speed one and a half. So uh, it won't take as long to watch. Now I'm going to try to line up nicely and I can see right through and I'm using both the flowers on the right and left to kind of line up there we go all right so there are my flower colors and again you get that texture from the distinctive stamp then one more inking i have let's see the little buds up towards the top of the flower and for that I, again i'm coming back to my pear pizzazz and I'm gonna tap, tap, and let's see. I need, oh, so this one has, I'm gonna line up. There is, you can see right here, the little bud that's gonna be at the base of this flower. So I'm gonna line that up there, and then I'm looking over to the, the buds on the right, and looking ahead to the buds up at the top to line up. So there we go, all right. There is our pretty flower. Now I do want to grab something I didn't have. Let me get my punch. Let's hope it's handy. To create, I'm going to bring in the, the sample card. To create that little tip, I'm using my punch. I have here the option of the dovetail edge and then also the peak edge. I'm going to go ahead and create that peak edge. I'm going to flip over, slide it in so easy to punch that tip. And this is kind of like a balancing act because it's not quite the full width of the slot. So there we go. And yet I'm pretty happy with that. So simple. And this is going to have a pretty little bow at the left so here we go i'm just going to snip that down a little bit there and oh dear one more thing i need i have the open weave fresh freezer ribbon let me see if i can slide that over i need to make a bow And to create the bow, I'm going to use my bow easy. I'm making a small bow. I love this tool. I got mine on Amazon. You can probably get yours multiple places. And last night I had a friend who had the wood version of this. So I guess it comes in either plastic or wood. So easy to make a pretty, oops, got a little bit of a snag on my finger. That Okay, so easy. There we go. All right. Whoa, that's overkill on the ribbon. That's why I don't like to cut my ribbon before I need need it. Um, I could have cut probably two ribbons with that, but no worries. Okay, so let's get ready here. For this, I'm going to add that to the card front with dimensionals. And when I said quick and pretty, that's literally what I meant. So maybe, whoops, maybe just four. And I've got minis at the ready. You could use the standard dimensionals. 
and this is going to go off to the left, right like so. We are going to pop also the sentiment, and I'm going to put a dimensional at the right, and then I'm going to put a little bit of, let's see, I can use some of my fast views here, make it really quick, because I don't want to double up on my height. I just want one level of, of height. So on the right, there's no dimensional. Towards the left, there will be, and I'm going to place it right around there so I can show a little bit more of the flower. Right? And then to secure my bow, I always like to use a glue dot. And I have a long tape running on my glue dots. And I think I need to get rid of some of these. All right, so I finally found a glue dot here. I'm going to add my bow. And obviously, I'm going to need to trim off that little ribbon. I did kind of have this to the side there. And I'm going to snip that ribbon. And also there. Super quick, right? And I think that would be a very cheery kind of card to send a friend. There's our first card in our class. And uh, with that hollyhock, I'm going to put that out of the way. The next card also has fresh freesia. This one's a little bit different. This is the one that has that fitting florets die. And... I'm going to share with you. Thank you, Corinne. Very pretty, right? And so simple. Sometimes we overcomplicate our stamping with too much. I think this simple design with the pretty colors, pretty flowers, and beautiful sentiments makes the perfect card set. Standard card size, again, it's basic white, so we don't even have to put a layer on the inside. Now, here's the dilemma. Again, we've got two pretty sides. I like the grid and I like the plaid. I think since I already have one in grid, I'm going to use the plaid on this one. And the hollyhocks is going to be stamped directly onto the card base. So again, on my piercing mat, this time I, I don't think I need my paper. I do need my big stamp and I'm inking up in black and I do want it pretty low it's going to be centered and I want it low let's see see what I mean I don't need my let's see I don't need my, my scrap paper below and I'm gonna go with there. And just pressing firmly, it's a big stamp, so you wanna make sure you get the entire outline inked up. Perfect. And we are doing the same color scheme with Pear Pizzazz. Let me bring that back in. Pear Pizzazz leaves. And we're going to do the same kind of alignment, remembering it doesn't have to be precise. It's a watercolor effect with some nice texture. There's my leaves. And, oh, let's see. I need the buds as well. So there's no particular order. You can do your granny apple and then your fresh freezer or do it the other way around. You've got your black black ink to guide you so that's all we're looking out for there and let's see I'm gonna try to line that up good and then one last stamp with the fresh freesia Right, there we go 
And then I do need my sentiment on this one. I am going to say sending happy thoughts. So I need another sentiment from my stamp set. And I just need to find that sentiment. I'm going to go back here. I didn't mount all of them because I would have too many blocks. Let's see. I think that's it there. And I'm just using the smaller block, block B. And again, we can see right through. So I'm going to be able to stamp on the oval that I pre-punched from that oval punch right through. There we go. I love this. So easy. All right. So we're ready to adhere the first layer with that oval is going to be flat adhered. And so I can use my Tombow liquid glue and I probably shouldn't be gluing on my mat. <laughs> I don't want to get it sticky. All right. And I think I've got a little bit of a clog there. That should fix it. There we go. This is just flat adhered all the way around. And I'm going to place it right in here. And I'm going to have about an eighth of an inch border all the way around. All right. Now on this one, I am using some silver twine and I've got probably about maybe a 12 inch length. I'm gonna make a nice big loopy ribbon. It's kind of out of control. Let me tighten it up just a little bit. And let's see, I want this to kind of have some nice floppy loops. I'm gonna put a glue dot on here to hold it down on my card. And I'm gonna put it right like so. And my greeting is going to be on dimensionals. And I'm gonna put it right through. Now, let's see. Put that loop down a little. Sending happy thoughts. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to get the dimensional inside the loops to, that has, has a little bit of control for the loops. And I'm going to need to trim that too. I don't like that hanging there. But let's see. Whoops. My ribbon scissors disappeared on me. Let's see if I can find them. Right there. And then I want to kind of cut the phrase on that. So there is, oops, that's not sticking down. Let's see, did I forget to, let me step on that a little bit differently. Better, okay. So there is card number two. I don't know, what do you think? Do you like the plaid better or the grid? I do like them both, I think. Well, I'm not going to say which one I'm inclined to. Let's see what you think. Give it a second. I like the, you have a little bit more white on, on the plaid than you do on the grid side. They're both pretty. And what I was thinking, let me put that down. Hopefully I still have that. The hollyhocks do have a little center, and there is a stamp that you can actually stamp the center of the flowers. However, I like to add my embellishment there, and I'm using just the basic pearls. I'm going to use my Take Your Pick tool, and I'm going to bring in one of the medium-sized pearls, add that to the center, and I'm going to do the same on my other card I just created, card number one. This one's gonna be covered a little bit, but that's okay. This one's covered with the ribbon a little. Let's see if I can get control of that. There we go. What do you think? 
I think I'm inclined towards the plaid just because it has a little bit more white and a little bit more airiness to it. Yeah. All right. Let's keep going. We're going to go on to card number three. And we're going to switch up a little bit. We have a new color scheme this time. Still the paper from Dandy Designs. This time we're going with the watery blue, the pool party and the balmy blue. And we're using a different flower and that cute little bee that's in the stamp set. This one's gonna be a thank you card. So I'm gonna put that there as reference. Same dimensions, let me get my kit. It's still basic white, the five and a half by eight and a half. I've got the five by four and a quarter inch designer series paper, which is DSP, which just means the pattern paper. Somebody asked me that this week. What is DSP? And I get so used to Stampin' Up! Speak. <sighs> Marie says both are pretty. So you and I agree, Marie. I think yes, I like the plaid better. So here we're back to that same square pattern I like, but this time we've got the watery design. We've got that pretty um, pool party and balmy blue. This is going to be a horizontal card, and I'm not going to adhere it yet. I'm going to go ahead and do my stamping. This time I have still a stylish shape, but I have the smaller circle, and we are going to be stamping the smaller flower and this is a single little flower this is also on block C and I'm going to ink up in black and I'm going to stamp two times so one a little bit higher and ink up a second time see this one's a smaller one so I can dip it in the ink easier There we go, and I'm also going to ink up a cute little bee. And it's gonna be hovering around there. All right, so there is my outline stamping. Oh, let me go ahead and stamp my thank you. I'm gonna pick, uh, I'm gonna go back to my block and I'm gonna get the thank you stamp from the case. Let's see if I have that handy there and ink up in black again and another oval punch this one is in pool party all right so now we just need to color our designs this one's going to be colored in calypso coral and let's see Move that pear pizzazz, and I'm going to bring in the flower. And you do want to pay attention to this little flower. Inside is the flower center. You can kind of see how it's pointing up. The pointy part is up, and we're going to be coming down right in here. Trying to pay attention here. And I think, oops, that one's off just a little bit, but that's okay. I'm gonna stamp off on this one just to have, oh. I'm gonna stamp off just to have a little bit of color variation, almost like we're creating two colors from one ink pad. There we go. And the flower center, oh yikes, I need my tiny, tiny stamp. And this one I'm fear, fearing I will lose. It is, oh my gosh, it is super, super tiny. Oops, I'm gonna put that down there and I need yellow, hopefully. I've got a yellow handy. Actually, I'm gonna use Mango Melody to do the flower center. And this one just goes, it's, whoops, I need to move that B 
right in the center here. Second time. And then I'm also going to use this to color in the little B. So I have the upper body and then the lower body. Perfect. There we go. So I just need to color the little buds. And for that, I am going to use Pool Party. And let's see, I've got my stamp right here. It's two buds side to side. And base of the flower and a little bud. One and two. All right, there we go. So next up is to adhere and this time this one's a little bit different i am going to first attach it to my pattern paper because i'm going to trim off a little you can see on my my sample i'm cutting a little bit off here so i'm going to add this and i am going to add it with dimensionals but i don't need any at the bottom I'm just going to trim the tiniest part off. I want it to come in about half an inch from the right and bringing it up here. All right, to snip it, very simple. I just flipped it over. I'm going to use the pattern paper as my guide. Right there. That's how that was created. Now the next thing is now I'm ready to put it on my card base with flat adhesive and let's see here's my liquid glue flip that over trying to avoid my fingers getting in there and I'm going to center it I'm going to have the eighth inch border all the way around And there we go, burnish that down. I'm gonna do the same with the silver twine. I'm gonna make a loop right in here. And glue dot to secure it. And it comes right off the side here. The Greeting goes on with a dimensional, or a couple of dimensionals actually. Right in there. And this comes over. Let's lift that up. And there you go. So simple, so pretty. There's my thank you card. It's a little bit long when we pull on that. There we go. There's my thank you card. There's card number three in the set using the watery tones, the Coastal Cabana, or sorry, the uh, Pool Party and the Balmy Blue. And that's a nice little thank you with the single hollyhock on it and the cute little bee. And the last card is going to continue in the same color scheme. This time it's going to be multiple singles and we're using the pretty plaid pattern and let's see what we've got we've got a couple of extra pieces on here so still the same white card base this plaid on the flip is a very soft geometric pattern it's so subtle um, would make a great background um, that's not too busy, not distracting. I do like the plaid, so that's the pattern I'm going to use. And again, this one's going to be a horizontal or landscape card. And I'm looking for my, there we go, my bone folder. Somebody said they use their nail. 
not too long ago who I was watching somebody they used a nail and I think it's so much easier with the bone folder all right I am going to be layering this up I'm not going to adhere it yet we're going to do our stamping first and do our layering before I adhere so this time I'm stamping on a piece of basic white that measures two and a quarter by five and a half oops five and a half yep all the way across I'm thinking I'm gonna to want to trim that but let me let me see I've got my piercing mat to stamp and I need the outline stamp in black four times so I'm gonna start with the two center I'm gonna start one lower coming in almost at the center right and angling it just slightly the one to the left is going to be a little bit higher and I'm putting it in kind of tight then I've got one to the right that's higher yet and then the one at the left comes down just a little bit and I'm gonna put my paper down don't want to soil my piercing mat there we go so that's that I'm gonna go ahead and stamp my greeting this one's a happy birthday and let me grab that stamp there we go I just need a block And ink up this measure is about half an inch by two and a quarter looks like for a very happy birthday and nice okay so on this one let's um, fork it on the right so I'm gonna get my taper snips and I'm just going to make a cut right down the center and then I'm gonna do my little dovetails there Oops. let me snip that just a little bit more and then I'm gonna add twine to this one this is the three twine combo pack I'm gonna use that coastal cabana twine and here we go I'm gonna wrap this twice and then tie it in a knot and let's see if I can I think I'm gonna cut it'll be easier to tie that knot and let's see if I can hold that down I need an extra pair of hands or at least an extra hand okay and let's tie that and knot it and I am going to snip that back just a little tiny bit all right all right so we need to do a little bit of coloring on here let me set that aside I'm gonna be mounting this on a piece of Bermuda Bay that I have scalloped with the scallop contour frames I'm gonna add leave that aside for now we're gonna go ahead and, and color and so the way this goes my coast uh, sorry my Calypso coral is this second in from the right and to align this what I'm looking at is the base of this little bud is this portion of the flower down here so that's what I'm gonna be looking to align that with don't try to put it up too high or you won't get a good placement so this is what I mean that's almost like the little cup of the flower there so I need to clean 
I'm going to be dipping in. Oh, no. I've got a little smudge of ink over here. That's okay. I'm going to be covering that. All right, so next I've got Petal Pink. And I think it's because my fingers are inky. I've got Petal Pink. I'm going to do the far right in Petal Pink. There. And clean the, clean the stamp. I'm going to go with my pool party toward the left. It takes a little bit of concentration to get it lined up right there. And then I need balmy blue for the final flower. right in here and I'm a little worried about yeah I think I'm gonna stamp off on this one I don't want it too dark there all right I do need that little center in mango melody here four times All right, then we need that little uh, leaf at the base, and we're doing that in the pear pizzazz four times. There we go. All right, so my last step I'm going to add a little bit of that splatter to my flowers and that splatter is actually a stamp so I can go ahead and bring that in. I'm going to remove my sentiment and I'm splattering in pool party. And let's see if I can just, let's see, a little above each flower off to the side. Let's see if I can cover some of that color on there and a little bit higher. There we go. All right, so that's the stamping. Let's see if I can get the ink pads out of the way. And I am going to mount my sentiment onto, let's see, the order. I'm going to trim this down first of all. I think I want, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven scallops. So let's start with a nice clean scallop here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. There. This is going to go behind the white. So I'm just going to Add a little bit of adhesive here. Put it right behind. And I want it about a quarter of an inch from the right side there. All right, now I can adhere this to my plaid. And you can see it's a little bit longer than I want it to be. So let's see, I am going to flat it here. And this is going to go about an inch from the base of the plaid. And I'm going to trim off that excess. And this is one of the reasons I like to build my layers before I add them to the card base. If I had added the background pattern paper, it would have been too late to trim that up right. This is going to go onto the card base. 
flat adhesive. So the key to the liquid glue is to use just a little and avoid going all the way to the edges so it doesn't ooze out of the, the edge right there. I love it because it is forgiving. You can kind of push it into position if it's not perfect the first time you land it. Now the little sentiment goes with dimensionals. and it goes right there at the base over the little scallops. I'm going to go ahead and add some pearls because I have a little bit of cleanup here. So I'm going to add one of the bigger ones. I'm going to cover up that goof where I smudged it with ink and then I'm going to add a couple more let's see one over there and then I'll add how about one over here by happy birthday there we go there is our fourth card for a happy birthday let me cover up my ink and I'll share with you all four cards and I'm also going to share this card class was a uh, created for my team it was accomplished at one of our team time meetings and um, it's fun to gather as a team and get together and stamp and recognize everybody's creativity and accomplishments there we go I'm going to bring in all the cards uh, and so that is the quick and pretty class for today featuring the Beautifully Happy, and let's see if I can shift them just a little bit there. All right, the Beautifully Happy and the Dandy Designs DSP from the Celebration Catalog. So I've got a happy birthday, a feel better kind of day, sending happy thoughts, and thank you. A nice little card set um, to have in your stash. Each one of these celebration gifts, the Beautifully Happy and the Dandy Designs is a $100 level gift. So you might say, well, Anna Marie, in order to get both of those, I would have to spend $200 US. You're absolutely right. And let me share with you what many of my customers like to do let's see if i can bring this in so this comes from the celebration of course on page 13 is the beautifully happy which is a hundred dollar stamp set and when i flip the page you can see the dandy designs dsp also 100 dollars um, qualifying now let me interject at this point some of my customers received goof brochures where it might say 120 in here and at the $50 level some of them might say $60 because there were some goofed catalogs instead of being US in the center they were Canadian let me assure you in the US it's still 50 and $100 to qualify so $200 to qualify what my I have a couple of customers, several, myself included. During celebration, what we like to do is uh, order our 12-month paper pumpkin subscription. And so over here, I'm going to do the math for you. Do the, <laughs> do the math. Do the math. The 12 month prepaid is $235. And that is to receive the paper pumpkin, your surprise every month for 12 months. That's going to save you $20 when you just purchasing it for a subscription rate. You're going to save off the month to month uh, subscription fee. But what that allows you to do is to choose four level one celebration items or 
two level two celebrations. So right there, you're going to get your 12 months of paper pumpkin and your two level two gifts. You're beautifully happy in your dandy designs paper. It also gives you $23 in host rewards. And what I would recommend for that, if you are new, you might want to get your paper snips and your take your pick in that $23 rewards. If you're not new and you already have these tools, it's the perfect time to get your envelopes and your basic white cardstock. Now, what you can also do is add just a $15 to your order, bumping it up to $250, which gives you an additional celebration gift. So again, I have several customers who like to do this during celebration time. Go ahead and purchase your 12-month subscription. You still have the ability to be selective. If you see a, an upcoming uh, pumpkin kit, because we do get sneak peeks, if you see something that you think is not for you, you always have the opportunity to unsubscribe for that month and or to skip a month and pick up again the following month. But having said that, you probably don't want to do that this coming month when we're going to be getting the Sunshine and Smiles Paper Pumpkin Kit between January 11th and February 10th. So you have up until the 10th to subscribe and get your kit for Sunshine and Paper, sorry, Sunshine and Smiles. The reason you would love this kit is because it coordinates with the Playing in the Rain Suite. You are going to be able to make nine cards, three of three designs with special peek through windows, the envelopes, you're going to get a mango melody spot, you're going to get the exclusive stamp set, and for the first time ever, you're going to have the chance to add on coordinating dies. Look at the cute little frog and the little flower trio of flowers. These are going to be additional dies that go with the Playing in the Rain suite. So last night I created a card. Let's see. I was hoping to show, share with you that card. I don't see where it is. It's not on my desk at the moment. Let's see. Um, using the plain in the rain suite with the cute turtle, the bunny, and the fox. They're gonna add the little frog character and another trio of flowers to add to the plane in the rain um, characters in this, in this suite. You have until the 10th of February to subscribe. You have until the 28th of February to take advantage of celebration. But if you opt in now, you're gonna have the chance to get your 12 month subscription started make sure you're in for this kit and the opportunity to get those add-on dies. So it's totally a great time to be a 12-month subscriber. Get your two $100 level items from Celebration and enjoy your quick and pretty projects that we created today. There you go. So there is another offer during celebration. We'll talk about that next time. So this time, if you have any questions about how to either how to make these cards or how do you get your beautifully happy stamp set and paper, please message me or post a comment below. And uh, yeah, if you if uh, you have anything that you'd like to talk about, make sure you PM me. And I thank you for joining me. If you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. Share it with someone else you think might appreciate it. If you came in late or you had to leave early, you can always catch the replay or skip over to Just Stamp with Anna Marie on YouTube and watch the entire class. Thank you, Corinne, and thank you for getting me the name of the flowers. Or That was, I think, Kathy and Marie that, that advised me. These are hollyhocks, pretty hollyhocks. Um, that you can start stamping with. All right, my friends, thank you so much for joining me. I will be back, of course, next Thursday, hopefully on time <laughs> next week. Thanks so much for sharing time with me. Bye-bye.